Shankly, 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 Shankly. My dad loved that song. This early October clash in England's Premier Football Division in the long ago 1981 was momentous for a host of sporting and human reasons and was the first game since the passing of Liverpool's almost mythic, somewhat ethereal and very definitely legendary manager, Bill Shankly. Perfectly in keeping with the gravitas and the huge loss Shankly would be to the world of football as well as life itself, his towering striker of days past John Toshak was the current manager of Swansea City and he'd overseen the incredible, fairy tale climb of his Welsh team from the very depths of English football to its very pinnacle in just four years. As the teams lined up for a pre-match minute silence for the godlike man from the remote mining village of Glenbuck in Scotland, John Toshak wore a Liverpool shirt in his old manager's honour before at full time he marched, with tears streaming from his eyes, to give thanks to the hordes of Liverpool fans who still adored him from their vantage point on the Reds' famous Cop End Terrace. Using a cliché such as, he would have loved a game such as this, I rather think the great man would. On a bog of a pitch cutting up in huge chunks, and which would no doubt be laughed at by today's bowling green standards, referee Arnold Challoner would book five Swansea City players, have a reason to send off their legendary Welsh international goalkeeper Di Davies, award three penalties, and oversee a feisty and scrappy game that saw the visitors from Wales 2-0 up and in full control of a game that as fresh underdogs to the first division they would have been expected to lose. And they almost did. Yes, I rather think the bloody-minded human spirit that was Bill Shankly would have thoroughly, thoroughly approved. The visitors from Wales showed no fear of the occasion whatsoever and the game's first chance fell to the team dressed all in white. John Mahoney released ex-Everton striker Bob Latchford, who forced a good save from Liverpool goalkeeper Bruce Grobbelar, but left-back Neil Robinson pounced on the resultant loose ball, pushed it past red skipper Phil Thompson, who clumsily failed him in the penalty area. The first of the day's three penalties were awarded, the first of the three clumsy challenges that forced referee Challoner to make a decision, and the first of three penalties to be firmly dispatched into the opposition's net. Welsh international Leighton James firmly placed his kick out of the reach of a despairing dive from Bruce Grobbelar, and the team from Wales had a deserved 1-0 lead on 16 minutes. They could and should have extended their lead mere minutes later, when a huge goal kick from Di Davies was headed on by Bob Latchford, causing mayhem in the Liverpool defence. As Grobbelar raced to meet an on-rushing Alan Curtis, the Welsh striker lobbed it over the Reds goalkeeper but away from goal. With the ball still live, a cross into the six-yard area found Robbie James and his firm header was headed off the goal line by Phil Thompson. The best the home team Reds could muster in an insipid first half were long-range efforts from Graham Souness and Ray Kennedy, as well as a goal line clearance on the cusp of half-time. A quick corner from Sammy Lee to Phil Neal resulted in a curling cross to the far post, met firmly by striker David Johnson, who saw his header cleared off the line, but an equaliser would have been cruel on the visitors as they had played by far the more cohesive and progressive football, hampered by a truly dreadful and deteriorating Anfield pitch. Liverpool started the second half brighter and better than before the half-time break with Graham Souness presenting fellow Scottish international Kenny Dalgleish with an easy chance he chunked way over the bar before a smart move involving Sammy Lee and Phil Neal released Terry McDermott to, for to finally force a meaningful save from the visitors goalkeeping custodian Di Davies. But from nowhere, the Welsh team extended their lead on 57 minutes. A loose, scrambled ball on the halfway line was won by Robbie James who continued into space on the right flank before crossing an innocuous ball to the edge of the Liverpool penalty area. A mistake from skipper Phil Thompson presented the ball to ex-Everton striker Bob Latchford and he gleefully smashed his effort into the far corner of the Liverpool net, leaving Grobbelar helpless. With just over half an hour to play, Swansea City had a dreamlike 2-0 lead, but seven minutes and two penalties later, the teams were level at 2-2.
both penalties were avoidable and similar to the sloppy challenge that gifted the penalty in the first half. A huge goal kick from Grubelar was contested and the loose ball forwarded, forwarded by Terry McDermott to Kenny Dalgleish, whose shot squirted and deflected away from goal. Ronnie Whelan just reached the loose ball before Neil Robinson, but was heading even further from goal as his lunging challenge brought down the Irish international for an avoidable penalty. Terry McDermott's weak effort should have been saved by Di Davies but wasn't, and five minutes later it would be deja vu all around. After a brilliant one-handed save to deny Kenny Dalglish an equaliser, Davies cl clumsily collided with Terry McDermott, a penalty awarded, and this time McDermott smashed the resultant spot kick past a frustrated Swansea goalkeeper. A melee ensued after the penalty, with Davies lucky to only be booked and not sent off, and the game still had 26 minutes to play. The final quarter of the game saw a plethora of good half chances for Kenny Dalgleish, who shot wide when he should have scored, as well as being denied yet again by Davies in the Swansea goal. Terry McDermott had a weak effort easily saved, Phil Neal tested Davies with a fierce drive, and Alan Kennedy, Phil Neal again, and David Johnson all saw their tame or weak efforts gobbled up by the Welsh goalkeeping great. Despite the red strong finish, the All-Whites from Swansea City fully deserved their drawn point, and having seen John Toshak's tearful wave to his once adoring fans on the cop at the end of a match, I'm sure his boss would have loved. It brought more than a rogue tear to this old footballing romantic's eyes. And that was volume 11 of the Liverpool Football Club, the Retro Series, in support of my self-published book from May of 2023, entitled Chasing the Impossible and the Sword of Damocles. It's a book I'm immensely proud of. It's a book traditional publishers refuse to read. So I'm just trying to poke the eye of those publishers who re refused to read my manuscript. Go on, buy it. It's nearly Christmas. Thanks for watching. Peace, everyone and solidarity and I thank you once again for watching. Peace.